the Hearthstone match. Round three, both players 0-2 fighting for their tournament lives. Brodominus Rex versus Redix. All right, looks like we have Hunter versus Mage. How how very interesting there. Uh, as I've said before, I really like Mage's matchup against Hunter. I think they have a very favorable matchup against Hunter. Um, especially with cards like Volcanic Potion, Frostbolt, Flame Strike. So many outs to everything that Hunter brings to the table. Matt starting off a little bit slow. Neither player has really summoned a minion. Tim um, using a more conservative approach, and I think that's somewhat of a smart idea. You don't want to load the board against Mage and then see it wiped, uh, as we saw in Joe versus Coach. That's uh, an easy way for Hunters to run out of steam really quickly. And one thing that is interesting, these are the only two players that are bringing Druid in their uh, lineups, uh, which is which is really interesting. I'd love to see maybe a Druid Mirror match. Um, I think Colin kind of revealed that he's running the Jade Druid. Uh, we don't know if we don't know if they're uh, both running Jade Druid or if Tim's got maybe an Aggro Druid or a different sort of Druid running around. But uh, it should be an interesting play either way. Again, t players kind of taking their time. Tim finally getting a snowball effect going now. Uh, we've got the Rat Pack with Wind Fury. Man, that's quite a terrifying Rat Pack then. Uh, Colin with the Archonologist has a secret up. We don't know if that's block or barrier. Um, we could probably assume it's going to be a barrier this early in the game. Or he could be doing a uh, block. That way he can proc, uh, he can resolve Medivh's Valet anytime that he wants. And the answer is yes, I am updating the scoreboard. Um, trying to pull up that information now as we speak. Really curious as to how Revolution versus um, Deckles is going. That's a pretty hype match. Both players 2-0. and oh. So disappointing. I really wanted to see Sean uh, continue playing. He, he would have been 2-0. Oh. He would have been playing coach this round. Um, yeah, yeah, surprising the crap out of all of us. He's doing so well with the Priest and Paladin deck. Catching up on some of the chat and some of the group chats out there. Tim starting to get some damage, starting to get a little, little relevant board here. He's got a f uh, crazy 5-1 rat. That's interesting. That, that's a target for Ping if I've ever seen it. 4-2 Crackling Razor Maul, and then Layok, the roll from uh, Animal Companion. Probably would have liked Misha or Huffer there, but the Layok is nice too to buff the rest of the minions. Colin going to go ahead and throw up another secret, and Ping the 5-1 rat, taking 5 damage off the board effectively. Another match, Miami Joe, one and one versus Benzio, one and one. Uh, moving to two and one is a great step towards top cutting. Wonder how those players are doing. Waiting on Gertie and Demoralizer to uh, hop on in if uh, Demoralizer gets his iPad uh, technology situation sorted out here. Yeah, the only thing that worries me about Colin's board right now is that he doesn't have any minions, and now he's staring down a 7-5 Savannah High Main. And can we take a look at how sexy this golden Savannah High Main looks? 7-5 um, because of Layok. Uh, it's going to provide so much value, and Colin's going to target down the Layok with the Meteor, effectively killing the Layok and the Crackling Razor Maul, but still has a 6-5 High Main. Uh, obviously, the big counter to that is going to be the Polymorph, if we can see Colin draw it. Uh, now this is an interesting spot for Tim, and this is exactly what I think he's going to do. Go for the steady shot hero power, go into the Dinomancy, Dinomancy on that high main, and he's going to do some serious damage to Colin. Eight damage to the face. Oh, it brings Colin down to 11 health. 
Oh, I don't know if Colin was quite prepared for this big of a start from Tim. Tim took it a little conservative in the beginning, but turns three, four, and five, he really put the damage on. And now here in turn seven, uh, we're seeing Tim lay some serious damage with some big minions. And there it is, the Polymorph coming up from Colin, takes that Hymene off the board, gets another secret up, probably want to assume that's another Ice Barrier. Um, Tim, you've got to, you've got to Dino Man see the sheep. Come on, man. Yeah, there it is. A uh, five-five golden sheep, <laughs> buffed by Dino Man. See, Hunter's new uh, epic spell that turns their hero power into uh, hero power. Give a beast two-two. Awesome. This is what I like to see. This is the kind of stream stuff that's gonna show everybody who we are at TG. A five-five sheep with taunt. That's what I'm talking about. Man of Worm coming out from Colin. Another secret going up. I wonder what kind of secret that is. And targeting down that polymorph sheep there. 5-5 five, five. with the fireball. He's just going to want to get rid of that. Take 5 damage off the board. Ping Tim's face. And uh, sets up a nice board with a 3-3 three, three Man of Worm. Two secrets sitting at essentially 14 health. Kill command is going to come out from Tim though. Into the mana bind. Oh, now that's a spicy play there. So he'll still get the uh, kill command off, and that's still going to kill the mana worm. Uh, go ahead with the animal companion. Uh, that was kind of smart by Tim, though, to go ahead and use the kill command first. I would much rather have my opponent have a kill command. Uh, essentially three mana for three damage, nothing too spicy. But you really don't want your opponent to have a uh, animal companion in their hand. That would be devastating. Especially since it costs zero for the mage, they finally have minions on board. Uh, that would have been really cool. Colin in a really tricky spot here. He is uh, going to have to find a way to deal with these two minions. But if he does, though, Tim only has two cards in hand. And Colin's going to go right for the spicy play, going with the Medivh. Into the kill command himself, but because that did cost zero, he's going to summon a zero cost man minion from the staff, <laughs> which um, brings out the 1 1 Wisp. Uh, these are the plays, folks. This is what it's all about. And Tim's going to go ahead and drop the jeweled macaw, and he will roll a pantry spider from that, it looks like. Oh, we see KOC Stigmata online, so it looks like Sean is going to be able to recover from his technical difficulty and probably get in some games with Dom here. Um, the show must go on, folks. Super stoked to see Sean. He's doing so well in this tournament. I, I, I hate to have to give him a, a game loss, but if he can rebound from it, I mean, I think he can make some noise here in Top Cut. Uh, hats off to you, Sean, for getting back into it. Back to the game at hand. Reddix is in a really difficult situation here. He's got a 4-6 buffed Layok to deal with that is buffing Tim's entire board of beasts. Uh, he's got to find a way to get rid of that. The Nestling Rock is in the way of, of straight up hitting it. Colin targeting Tim's face with a fireball. Staff of AT is going to bring out... Ah, Defender of Argus. If only it would have got the battle cry. And a Frostbolt coming out from Colin... Uh, I'm kind of curious as to what Colin's doing here. Uh, if he's got the Power Blast in hand, he still needs to come up with 6 damage. He'll crash Medivh into the Nestling Rock. Hero Power and, and the Golden Wisp for 1. He still needs to come up with 4 damage now in order to finish off with Pyro Blast. I mean, how, how cool would it be if he had Pyro Blast and another Ice Block in his hand? Layok is buffed to a 6-8. Uh, I'm not going to say a misplay by Tim, but I think it would have been wiser if Tim used the two Spoders to uh, effectively bring down Colin to one health. That way he can use his hero power next turn to get rid of it.
Alex draws, it comes out. That's going to bring Colin back to 15 health. But I don't know if it's going to be quite enough. Now, oh, there's the kill command. That's going to be a ton of lethal for Tim. Uh, GG's well played all around. Tim will take game one with Hunter. Uh, and honestly, this is going to put T Colin in a bit of a tricky situation as Rogue and uh, Druid don't necessarily have a good matchup against Hunter. Tim, Tim handled that very well. So Tim went with the risky play, leading the Hunter. Um, knew that was probably going to be his best matchup against all of Colin's classes. And, uh, yeah, here we are. So down goes Colin's uh, mage. And he's, he may have a difficult time here recovering from losing his best matchup against Hunter. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave this match here and jump into Colin's viewpoint of this. Spectating Colin, which is under my account, John Chikro. So we got Rogue against Hunter. Now here's an interesting thing. We've got the Swash Burglar, which is a great start normally, but it just depends if Tim runs the Galaka Crawler which uh, effectively would be devastating for Colin to have to deal with a 3-4 right off the bat. Uh, no Eviscerate in hand either. It'll be interesting to see what Colin chooses to mulligan for here. He's going to ditch the Auctioneer and the uh, Sherez and Corpse Flower, keeping the counterfeit coin. He gets the coin, Preparation and Mimic Pod. Uh, Tim will lead with the Fiery Bat. Okay. Colin tops deck into an Edwin Van Cleef. Now, here would be a spicy play. Oh, man. Colin, Colin you're blowing it, man. The play was to preparation into Mimic Pod into double coin Edwin Van Cleef and drop a 10-10 Edwin. Super swag. Tim has no way to deal with it. Um, maybe that's a play for next turn, though. We'll see. So, Swatch Burglar comes out, brings out patches from deck, and we'll see if Tim led the Glocka Crawler. Looks like he did not lead the Glocka Crawler, going instead of a Crackling Razor Maul onto the Ash, uh, the Fiery Bat, Divine Shield, and he'll crash into Colin's face. Vile Spine Slayer, that's going to be really clutch. It's one of the only ways that Rogue has to deal with the Savannah High Mains. And while we were talking about the Edwin play that could have been, we didn't even notice that Colin himself picked up a Savannah High Main from the Swash Burglar. So that's something that Tim's going to have to deal with later on in the future. Colin daggering up, crashing into the uh, fiery bat there, breaking the divine shield, and he's just going to choose to go face. No, he'll go face with patches, hit the fiery bat, and the fiery bat's uh, death rattle effect, deal one damage to an enemy, uh, goes off onto the hero itself. So 25 health to 28 health. Uh, Tim will go ahead and drop the rat pack here. And you know, I'm really curious, I, I don't know if Colin is just afraid of something or if he's hesitant but he really needs to go off for a big edwin van cleef hunter has really no way of dealing with a big van cleef even in 8-8 hunter has such a difficult time dealing with um colin can clean up the game here in a couple turns I want to check on something real quick while Colin thinks about his turn here. Um, it looks like that Gertie is doing battle with uh, KOC Stigmata, which is Sean. So it looks like their matches are well underway. Colin preps into the Mimic Pod, and ooh, he Mimic Pods into Double Hallucination. If I'm Colin, I'm going. I'm Coin, Hallucination, Coin, Hallucination, Edwin. Let's see what he chooses here, if he can get it off in time. On the hunt. Counterfeit Coin, Hallucination. Here we go. Looks like he went for the on the mark, and he drops the Edwin Van Cleef. A 14-14 Edwin Van Cleef. Wow, folks.
that is going to be difficult for Tim to deal with. Um, Colin also picked up a Hunter's Mark in an, on the hunt from his hallucination cards. Um, I like those choices. I think they were better options, but considering the fact that Colin also has a Vile Spine Slayer in hand, uh, going into turn 6, he'll be able to proc the combo effect, and it brings down the cost of the Arcane Giant, another big mini that Tim's going to have a hard time dealing with. Oh, but giving the taunt to the Rat Pack. Colin has to attack through the Rat Pack. That's why I think he should have gone for the Edwin Van Cleef play earlier. Uh, SI Agent coming out, though. Uh, a good play may be to maybe Hunter's Mark and then combo into the SI Agent. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. Or maybe even on the hunt and then SI Agent combo for something else. That's exactly what he's going to do. Summon the 1-1 Mastiff. That, that is the better play. Uh, props off to Colin for that. And uh, yep, and dagger up and and go face and then this is gonna be it. Tim needs to do come up with uh, it's four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. He's got thirteen damage. He just needs two extra damage, and I think he's gonna have it. Maybe not. But it looks like that Tim is pretty determined to kill this Edwin, crashing all of his minions into it. But he leaves it alive! Wow, Edwin Van Cleef left alive. Tim didn't have enough damage for lethal. The hyena is huge, but the Van Cleef is just going to clean up here. I don't believe it. Tim could not come up with two extra damage to avoid being... Wow. Two damage short from beating Colin. Colin gets the Van Cleef out, and that's exactly why you need to get a big Van Cleef early against Hunter. They cannot deal with it. Colin was able to eliminate the taunt... Ironically, with the two cards that he discovered from the hallucinations, um, and he's going to go ahead and take game two, bring this back to a 2-2 game, taking down Tim's Hunter. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Tim picks to go up against this rogue. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say he's going to bring out his Shaman, but I know he really feels confident with his Druid. Uh, so let's bring it back to Brodominus Rex and see what his counterpick is to Colin's rogue. Just like I suspected, he's going to go with the Shaman. For I can't do that. Wow, what a great start for Tim. He's got the Firefly turn one. He's got the Jade Claws. But instead, he's going to go for the uh, South Sea Deckhand, bring out Patches, and uh, start swinging right away. I don't know how much of uh, Token Shaman Colin has played against. Um... I'll, I'll be interested to see how he deals with it, though. Colin passes turn one. No uh, Swashburglar, no Hallucination. Uh, Tim has a couple different options here. He can drop both the Firefly and the uh, elemental, but he said he's just going to hero power, gets the spell damage plus one, could be clutch if he draws into the uh, Jade Lightnings. Turn two, Colin's going to drop the Razel Petter to Lasher. That's good. It's, it's a great body, 2-2 two -two body on the field. Forces Tim to trade the uh, deckhand with it. Firefly comes out from Tim. The Jade Claws are probably going to come out next. Nope, he's just going to go straight for it. And hero power. Okay, interesting call by Tim, but uh, he's piloted the deck to victories before, so we'll see if that strategy comes out well for him. Colin going with the fan of knives. That's going to effectively kill three of Tim's minions. And with the lasher, he's going to be able to... Okay, he's going to go face. Uh, I probably would have traded with one of the minions there, but the fan of knives coming in super clutch for Colin, eliminating most of Tim's board.
Colin has a lot of cards in hand, nine to be exact. Uh, Tim also has a lot, quite a bit of cards in hand with six. Um, choosing that turn just to hero power and pass. I wonder what he's saving the Jade Claws for. Uh, if there's any particular reason why he hasn't just dropped out the Jade Claws outright. Uh, Colin targeting down the Razor Petal. And then targeting down face with the Eviscerate. Now that's an interesting call going. Oh, what? Colin went face all three hits with that turn. I wonder what his strategy is here. He, he, he Surely he has to be worried about a Bloodlust or an Evolve. Um, I think with one, two, three, four, with five minions on board, Tim may have lethal next turn. Maybe Colin knows something that we don't know. Maybe he's got something in his hand that he's pretty confident can take the game. So many options. Another fan of knives comes out. That's only going to be able to kill one minion, um, but the dagger and the... Razor Petal Lasher should be able to take out the remaining two, which effectively kills Tim's Bloodlust. Oh. Just don't understand the, the face craze for Colin right here. I definitely think that trading is the superior option. Tim with the Servant of Calamos. Oh, and he's going to go ahead and pick up uh, <laughs> Hazel, as uh, everybody pronounces him over here, uh, the Ascended. <laughs> Swashburglar out. Here comes Patches. And uh, suddenly Colin's building up himself a pretty stable board. Uh, I still like Tim's long game a lot better than I do Colin's right now. Tim's got a lot of great cards. The Lightning Storm, uh, the Bloodlust to finish the game, Devolve in case Colin builds up too big of a board. Uh, and then these powerful, incredibly beautiful looking Golden Elementals. <laughs> Colin is, it must be confident that he can kill Tim before Tim can kill himself. Um, going face just about everywhere. Bringing out the Blood Mage Thalnos. Colin's going to use the dagger. He's going to go face. He's going to go all out on face, except he's going to use the dagger to kill the 0-1 totem for the spell totem. Uh, Bloodlust still doesn't get the KO here. It's important to note that would bring it to 7, 11, um, 15... Bloodless Jade Claws still would not get there. Lightning Storm comes out, and that's going to wipe all of Colin's board. Oh, that's got to be devastating. Didn't even need the Devolve for it. Just went straight up with the Lightning Storm. Here come the Jade Claws from Tim. Uh, he must be pretty confident that he's going to be able to win the game next turn with the Bloodlust. With the Overload, he's going to be at exactly 5 mana. Uh, Let's see if, if Colin has anything else in his deck that can clear these minions off the board or else it's going to be a pretty easy sweep for Tim. Colin going for the hallucination. Now wouldn't it be funny if he discovered a lightning storm of his own? I think that would be hilarious. An interesting card discovered by Colin. For those who don't know what it is, the Wicked Witch Doctor. Every time he casts a spell, you summon a random basic totem. Colin's been able to cast two spells this turn. Oh. Bringing out two totems. Make it three totems with the counterfeit coin. And there it is! The Lightning Storm! He did get it! Builds his board up of totems, just about wipes Tim's whole board except for one uh, minion. 
So no bloodlust again for Tim. Let's see how he decides to deal with this. Tim going straight for the Devolve, turning to a bunch of Wisps, but he did get the uh, unfortunate taunt over there. Transforms that into a Hex. He'll probably smack that with his face and then uh, hit Colin directly with a 4-5. and drops down the arcane giant and that's eight damage that Tim needs to worry about and he already used his hex Colin eviscerates the 4-2 goes face with the rest of the wisps and as it stands now Colin has lethal next turn what a top deck Tim top decks the hex and if I'm Colin I'm one salty son of a gun right now hexing the Arcane Giant taking the immediate threat off of the board and here comes Tim's board being built back up and rolls the taunts on the totem Wow, I do not want to be in that group chat tonight. That was that was the top deck that we're gonna be talking about all night folks Column will target the taunt totem with the backstab an interesting play uh, Mimic Pod, let's see what he can draw into here. He drops another Arcane Giant, an 8 8 Arcane Giant. And plays the Aya, who unfortunately does not get her battle cry because Colin's board was full. Unfortunately for Colin, I think what the play is here is that if Tim's going to drop Kalamos and cast the uh, invocation of deal 6 damage to the opposing hero. And I think that's going to be a solid case of GG for uh, Colin. But you never know. It's not over till it's over. Let's see what happens. And there it is. Going into Kalamos. And deal six damage to the enemy hero. That's going to be it. Tim takes game number three and brings Colin back against the wall here, facing elimination and uh, game loss in round number three. So down goes Colin's rogue, leaving him with just his druid left. Tim locked into that shaman deck. Let's see how Colin is able to bounce back. Let's see what uh, changes he makes. I don't necessarily like this matchup whatsoever. I think Shaman can uh, build up a board in Bloodlust before any Jades can go off, but uh, we'll see if Colin's able to bring this back. I would love to see Jade versus Jade in the final game. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Tim, again, leading that South Sea deckhand, brings out patches, one damage right to face. Colin passes on turn one. He did not get the Jade Idol. Um, nor did he get maybe an, an Innervate or Wild Coin into Wild Growth. So Tim will just go ahead and the Hero Power. Smack face twice with the patches in the South Sea Deck Cannon Pass. Uh, let's see what Colin has here on turn two. Looks like he's going to be able to play a card. Coins into maybe Tar Creeper. Stonehill Defender. Let's see if uh, he can discover a decent taunt minion here. Maybe buy him a few turns. Maybe sidestep a couple Bloodlust plays. Uh, we'll have to see what he uh, chose from that Stonehill Defender. Tim drawing into the Maelstrom portal. Um, has a couple different options he can do here. I think the fire, the Firefly, and probably just Hero Power is probably the best bet, but 
not. Tim's gonna go ahead with the Maelstrom Portal. Might as well, I guess, when you got the Spell Totem out there. Gets the Abusive Sergeant. And, uh... Able to KO the rest of the Stonehill Defender with the South Sea Deckhand. Hit face with patches. And let's see what Colin has to respond with. Okay, Colin's going to go ahead and drop the Stubborn Gastropod, um, the minion he clearly thought was the best choice from his available taunts. And Tim top decks into the Eye of Black Paw, but I don't think there's any doubt he doesn't play uh, the Stone Shaper here. Ah, that taunt and Divine Shield is so good. Easily trades in two minions to get rid of the taunt on Colin's side. Tim has kept, has, has gotten the board first and has kept it. Um, Colin finally able to get some sort of Jade support, getting the Jade Spirit, bringing out the 1-1 one, one Jade, and see if he can get these Jades going before Tim's able to sweep the field. Colin's going to head over with the Innervate. And Wild Growth. Okay, so it's Colin will indeed be going into 6 mana next turn. That could be huge. He may have done that specifically because he may be ha holding a Jade Behemoth in hand. So Tim is going to go ahead and smack face for now and use his hero power, drop a flame elemental, and probably pass. Or lay it all out there. Drops the South Sea Deckhand as well. Has quite a big board. Maybe he's trying to bait Colin into thinking he has the Bloodlust for kill. Uh, force Colin to maybe play around it that way. And there it is, the Jade Behemoth, bringing out a 2-2 Jade, putting a 3-6. Big, beefy taunt on board. Uh, I 200 expect Tim to use his Lightning Storm here to try to get rid of it, and then finish it off with the Stone Shaper. Instead, he's just going to lay down the Flame Tongue Totem, and now he will go ahead and Lightning Storm. I think that's that's the play. He wiped just about all of Colin's board there. Um, trades with the Fire Elemental. We'll smack face. Oh, Colin's just taking way too much damage here. Uh, and I'm not sure what Colin can do to come back from this. That was a, a pretty beefy play here by Tim. Colin doesn't have enough mana for a Primordial Drake. Colin going for the Wrath onto breaking the Divine Shield, trying to draw into something. Even a swipe won't save him here because he's not going to be able to KO this uh, Stone Shaper. Going with the Feral Rage, grab himself 8 armor. So he may be able to survive for one more turn now that he's at essentially 18 health. And he'll use the Jade Idol to summon a 1-1-3-3 one, one, three, three Jade and use the Earthen Scales to grant himself some more armor. Clearly in a little bit of a desperation mode here. Uh, Tim did indeed top deck the Calamos, so next turn he'll be able to drop that. Um, if he does the 6 damage to the enemy again, it's probably going to be game. Colin will go ahead and innervate, and a turn 10, he drops the Yogg-Saron! Here we go, folks! Mark of your charge, Savage Roar, a secret, we don't know what it is. He takes control of a Flame Elemental, 
He's going to adapt, taunt onto the Oxeron, gets another secret. Target's down a 1-1, one, one, dealing 4 damage, cold blood. Gonna give the elemental the cold blood. Well, I'll be darned, folks, it definitely saved Colin. We don't know what those secrets are, but we've got an 11-7 Yogg-Saron with Taunt on the board. And a Flame Elemental big enough to kill the Stone Shaper. Wow. And just when you thought you've seen it all, out comes the Yogg-Saron. Jim going with the Lightning Storm, dealing the 4 damage. He's going to be able to KO the Yogg's around with the 2 attacking, uh, 2 attack totems. And totem comes out again from the hero power. Uh, let's see what Colin can muster up here. He's only got 2 cards in hand. He has overloaded 1. Jade Blossom coming out, summoning a 4-4 four, four Jade. And then the Nourish! Replenishing his hand, playing just about perfectly on curve. Three cards, and now suddenly it's a game. 13 health with two secrets here. Explosive trap! Dealing two damage to all the enemies that's gonna kill the attacking spell totem. And Tim will have to pass for the turn. Don't look now, folks, but I sense maybe a growing comeback here. An explosive trap from the hunter. Wow, what a great secret to get. And we still don't know what the mage secret is. It could be a counter spell. It could be ice block. That would be so huge for Colin. Wrath coming out. Definitely probably going to be the three damage. Gets the KO. Oh, the one damage. He definitely wants to draw for the primordial drake. A 4-8 taunt on the board. Clears Tim's board. And the Jay Golem will smack Shaman's face. Uh, Tim has a few different options here, namely Pry uh, Calamos, which he will go ahead and drop, it looks like. No, maybe he's reconsidering it. Jade Lightning wouldn't be bad here either, summoning Aya, maybe. He will go on Jade for the Jade Lightning and summon Aya, staying on curve. Colin going into now, you know, four cards in hand. Just been able to bring this game back a little bit. Still has to deal with the Eye of Black Paw. Um, when she dies, she is going to summon a 3-3 Jade. She is putting five um, damage on board right now, which may not seem like a lot, but considering Colin only has ten health, that's quite a bit. Colin thinking about maybe trading in the Golem for Aya. Colin going for deals. Gadgets and Auctioneer going off with the Wild Growth. Excess mana drawing through his deck. This is exactly what he needs. He needs a big strong draw here. He needs to be able to get as many cards as he can in hand. Get ready for a mid-game turn. Tim only has two cards in hand. Colin's going to smack face with all of his minions. Colin's clearly confident that Tim does not have lethal. But I think Tim might if he's able to... Oh, I don't know about that play, Tim. I think I would have devolved and then went into Calamos. Uh, that would have been enough for lethal. He'll go ahead and devolve now. <laughs> Giving Colin a fledgling. Uh, we've seen that many complaints by Hearthstone players about that. Just being able to take games right off the bat. Tim doesn't want to deal with it. Kills it right away. So Tim had lethal. Uh, assuming that the devolve didn't bring up another taunt. And instead opts for a different play. Going for the Devolve a little bit later, keeping a more of a bigger board himself. I still think that the Calamos, unless that's Ice Block, that would have been lethal. Colin going right in with the swipe, and that's going to be enough for lethal, folks. He's got it. Unbelievable game. Colin able to make a big swing late. 
going straight for face. He must have been confident that Tim didn't have lethal, or he may have known that may have been ice block. We, we might not ever know. Um, what a great Yog Saran, though, getting the explosive trap and the ice block when it mattered. Unbelievable. And we're going to go into a game uh, five here, folks. Wow. I'm, I'm lost for words here. These guys fighting for their tournament lives know that neither of them can go. Uh, 0-3 oh, and, and still top cut. We're going to see Druid versus Druid. Uh, now that the match is about to start, we can go ahead and reveal that Colin is running the J-Druid while Tim is running the big ramp Druid that became a little bit popular in the middle of Ungoro and has seen a lot of play in bigger Hearthstone tournaments as of late. So here it is, folks. Round 3, Game 5. All the chips are on the table for these two competitors. Uh, we're going to see Tim's big druid versus Colin's J druid. And the, the better druid will come out victorious. Okay, so Tim off to a little bit of a uh, slow start, drawing some of his late game stuff, some heals, Primordial Drake, um, Earthen Scales, Colin, probably same boat, hero powering uh, on turn one, or on turn two. On turn three, he's going to go ahead and drop the Stonehill Defender. First card that we've seen revealed from Colin. SSB the Biscuit King. How's it going, Biscuit King? Uh, thanks for tuning in. Oh, Tim drawing in to the other Deathwing, the Deathwing Dragon Lord. Death Rattle putting all dragons uh, from your hand onto the battlefield. Not only is a 12 12 absolutely terrifying, but when you pair that with the other dragons that you run in this deck, like Ysera, the other Deathwing, uh, both Primordial Drakes, suddenly that card becomes literally a game winner. <laughs> An interesting choice of a taunt there for Colin going for a 1-7. Wow, and Tim draws into the other Deathwing. So for sure he has his kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card. If things get too out of hand, too many Jades on the field, Tim can just drop the Deathwing, reset the field, and drop a 12-12. Uh, of course, the cost of that awfully high. You have to discard your entire hand. Um, and when you're running a deck like Ramp Druid, you often have full hands, uh, losing a lot of different resources there. Um, looking into things now, it looks like that Josh and Joe have wrapped up their games, and I believe that Josh went ahead and took the victory there. So he will move on to 2-1. and one. Joe drops to 1-2. and two. Uh, Joe's going to have to win his next match in order to have a shot at top cut. So Josh, the first one to come victorious in round number three as other matches are still going on. Uh, we're seeing the finals of Tim versus Colin. Bradominus Rex versus Reddix here. Jade M Mirror Match. Jade Druid versus Big Druid. Wouldn't miss this for anything in the world, folks. Tim has got such an incredible hand here. Uh, going into turn 8, he's going to be able to innervate out into one of the Death Wings, probably the Dragon Lord, to bring out the other two dragons in his hand. Colin, here we go. He's going to go for the Fangirl uh, Stinkhelm and uh, <laughs> summon a 1-1 one, one Druid while shuffling three idols into his deck. What a great card. It meshes so well with Druid, especially Jade. Um, a card that was actually added to Colin's deck uh, late last night. Uh, and an impulse craft from me. Tim will drop the Bright-Eyed Scout. Draws a Feral Rage, unfortunately. That's going to up the cost of that card to 5. But, I mean, in a deck where you run minions that cost 9, 10, 8 mana, you might as well try for it and see if you can get maybe a 5-cost uh, Ysera. Colin hammering away at that taunt. That was a great pick of a taunt for Colin as Tim has un been unable to get rid of it. 
Um, Tim's going to earthen scales the bright-eyed scout and get four armor. I probably would have definitely saved that. Um, I, I don't really see the logic in that. Still can't deal with the taunt. And most importantly, the Fangirl Stake Helm is still on the other side of the field. Colin going out with the Wrath, going for four damage because it's all it's uh, both effects of Fangirl. Does the swipe to Tim's face, finishing off the Bright Eyed Scout, and it is starting to hit face here. Tim draws a swipe of his own. But here it is, the Innervate into the Deathwing Dragon Lord. The dragon shall kneel before him. And kneel they shall, because goodness gracious is uh, Colin not going to want to deal with the 12-12 right now. And if he dares kill it, it's just going to bring out another 12-12 and a 4-8 with taunt. Uh, Tim does have the swipe in hand, so next turn he will be able to swipe the uh, Warden, getting rid of the taunts and letting Deathwing go ahead and just hit face for a whopping 12 damage. I'm not sure that's something that Colin wants to be a part of. Let's see how he deals with this. He's going to go ahead with the Wrath. Again, getting both effects due to Fangirl. Um, four damage, draw a card. I think that's pretty good for only two mana, I would say. And Colin's going to go ahead and go for the Jade Behemoth as well. Uh, keeping those taunts in the way is definitely going to be a great way to slow down Deathwing. And uh, I don't think Tim's going to be able to get rid of both of them. Colin going straight for face wise choice and brings Tim down to 17 health. At this point, if you're Tim, are you really considering using one of your Moonglade portals to restore health? Um, now that, that, that Fangirl is just standing there, it, it's going to allow Colin to really go off if Colin draws into his cards like the Feral Rage, like more Jade Idols. Who's winning this tourney? Uh, well, it's hard to say considering it's Swiss, um, but I can say right now that Declan and Coach are both 2-0 fighting each other. Um, they're probably tied for first and second place. Um, Josh just beat Joe, which brings him to 2-1. to one. Joe falls to 1-2. and two. And for all those watching, uh, if you type in the command exclamation mark bracket, you'll be able to follow the bracket live um, all through Swiss and then eventually as we go through top cut. get a little preview here of uh, our lovely bracket and um, all the matches that have gone on so far. So I'm just receiving word now from Declan that Deckles is actually able to defeat Coach uh, three games to one. I'll wait for confirmation on that. So Deckles moves on to th four, uh, three and zero. Oh. Uh, what an impressive showing by Declan, coming in beating two of the stronger Hearthstone players. Um, but it also just goes to show just how good Sean has been so far, being able to just about beat Declan before an iPad uh, technical malfunction uh, forced him to take the round loss. And there it is, Deathwing, Death Rattle Effect. Wow, we've got another Deathwing and an Isera on board as well as a Primordial Drake. Tim's going to be able to heal his face for six. And just when you thought, wow, Colin is taking command of this battle, Tim turns the tides around with one card and now has an incredible board. And I'm not sure how Colin is going to be able to deal with that. He, he's got to get Jade's rolling almost immediately, and it may even be maybe too late. Jade doesn't run an incredible amount of removal, but he does have Fangirl still on board. So let's see what he's able to do with it.
Innervate coming out. Interesting that Colin goes and crashes the uh, Fangirl into there. Goes for the Primordial Drake. Now that's interesting. Dalton showing Tim some love. Big Druid is the sexiest deck in Hearthstone. Let's go. I couldn't agree more, Dalton. And Tim, oh, 12 damage to the face really hurts. Tim will go ahead and drop the Anaconda, probably for a little more offensive pressure. Uh, I think I maybe would have done the uh, Moonglade portal there. But, I mean, Anaconda's effect now uh, works with the Emerald Drake. 7 attack, 6 health. And Colin is scrambling, running out of answers fast. Uh, he's going to bring out a Jade Behemoth, a Taunt to maybe stall the game a little bit more. Uh, but the Anaconda is going to be able to crash with that and then bring out the Emerald Drake. Jade Idol coming out, a 4 attack Jade Idol. And the Earthen Scales is going to buff that Jade Idol, giving Colin 5 armor. And Colin will uh, hero power up and go right for face. Wow, Yasharge comes onto the field. The Anaconda brings out Yasharge. There it is. A 10-10 Yasharge. Oh, man. 12 damage right to the face, and if that's not GG Wells' play, I don't know what is. Dream, just for the heck of it, a zero-cost sap. g Idol right back to the hand. Chat looks like it's finally getting a little bit of activity here. We've got 10 viewers. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Shard's going to bring out the Curator. I don't think Colin has an answer to all of this unless he runs a Deathwing himself. Maybe a yogg Saron can save him again. He's going to go ahead and Nourish. Uh, don't think he has enough armor to get through. Uh, 4, 14, 21, 25. That's well over 30 damage. I think that's probably going to be GG well played around. Uh, big Druid. Really getting it done here. I got the best deals anywhere. Time waits for no one. And Tim's just probably going to go face right here. Doesn't want to mess around. And Tim will take the victory. Big Druid defeating the Jade Druid. For a minute there, it looked like that Colin was going to have the upper hand throughout most of the match. He got off to a pretty good start. And then Tim just kind of came out of nowhere. And it was really the, the, death, the Deathwing play. Uh, summoning those dragons onto the field was so clutch. Uh, that was just a board that Colin was not prepared to answer and really couldn't answer with anything that he had in his deck. His jades weren't built near enough for it. Uh, we didn't see the Yog saron save him like it did last game. Um, so hats off to Tim for piloting the big druid to a round three victory. And um, been seeing everybody uh, mention in the chat about who's winning. Let's go ahead and go to the bracket here. You can kind of 